Welcome back to Dishonor the Knife of Dunwall. We've just entered the legal district. I caught him snooping around nearby. He won't say who he is or what he's doing, but I locked him up just to be safe. He seems familiar to me. Reminds me of someone who used to do business with Timsh, but I'm not sure. Good work, Simmons. Now that that's handled, we can move on. You got the orders from Timsh, right? What's the next address? Crow's Court off Brambley Street. But there's a problem, sir. Let's go speak with his prisoner. And their kids used to sneak his food in. Carrion killer. Killing rats gives you some adrenaline. Eh, no thanks. It's Dowd, isn't it? You wouldn't be in this district unless you were after Timsh's head. What do you want? Revenge. To do to Timsh what he did to me. I want him homeless, a victim of one of his own eviction documents. I've prepared one, complete with the forged signature of the Lord Regent. Please, go to my old apartment. It's right next to Timsh's estate. Here's the address but I doubt you can get inside from the streets. There you'll find my journal, which contains the entire plot and everything you'll need. But you're a businessman like I once was. I don't expect you to do this for free. If you do go to my apartment, you'll find something stashed there. Consider it your payment in advance. Fair trade? God for that time stop. agility even more. I think I'm going to save up for Blink 2. Roland's Journal. So, Timsh thinks he's invincible because he carries a letter from the Lord Regent giving him legal immunity from the state seizing his goods in case of plague. He carries it everywhere, like a talisman. But he's also drafted the instrument of his own destruction. The document he uses for evictions is a generic form drafted by the office of the Lord Regent. It was trivial to acquire a blank one. Acquiring a forgery of the Lord Regent's signature was less easy, but thankfully some of my old connections are still loyal. Now, all I need to do is swap the two documents. Getting close enough to Timsh to do it won't be easy. I may need help from a professional. Once that's done, the fool just needs a push to go down, and that's the second part. 
Inside Timcha's basement, there's a device that circulates air in the building. If some material happened to find its way into the device, the building would reek like a weeper's den. I had to be particular about the actual material as I do not wish to infect the guard or servants with plague and cause needless suffering. The unsavory gentlewoman living in Unit 10 has offered to provide the odorous item and a sturdy sack to contain it. She craves my rune in exchange, so I'll be forced to part with it. She has given me a key to her unit so I can go and get the sack when I'm ready to make my move. So the non-lethal option is to switch the documents. I think I'm going to do that. I don't feel any overwhelming need to kill Timsh. Though I wouldn't be sad if I did. It's got nasty in the upper city. We handled it. One less mess for the watch to clean up. Oh, okay, we just slide off that. Jesus Christ. Ow. Odorous sack. <laughs> What's in it? This one was born to a wealthy family. He stayed out in the countryside because it was the only place he could see the stars at night. He was never educated, so he did not know what they were. He used to pray to them. Was that person the source of what's in the sack? There's something weird back there. questions? I wonder when he'll speak to me. Here's one last lesson for old time's sake. The barrister was a champion at finding his enemy's weak points, but he didn't see Delilah as a threat until it was too late. No one's watching Delilah now except you and me, of course. I see everything. I see forever. And right now, I see a man walking a tightrope over a sea of blood and filth. The Empress is dead, and the water's rising. Rothwild's gone, and his slaughterhouse is burned to the ground. Even the Empress couldn't boast of a funeral pyre so grand. You'd better hurry. You're running out of rope. You were in a daze. I hope it was enlightening.
So this is the big building. This is where Timsh is, I assume. So I think I want to go in there last. Air circulator, yeah. So let's check the stuff out over there. And uh, what do we still have? Gotta meet with our lieutenant. Switch the document if we want to do the non-lethal route, which I think I do. Find the last will and testament of Timsh's mother. That'd be inside, right? Then Granny's recipe from the 78 Draw the World. I don't know what that means. Obviously some sort of a riddle. You didn't say anything. You should pay. It smell you from here. You always see something. They heard it. Outsiders' eyes. I'm getting spooked. Stop messing around and come out at once. Ooh, that was close. in the lobby explaining his little system reconnaissance notes timsh is vigorous for a man of his age he's known to keep himself armed with a sword and pistol even when in his own home he's been observed to be generally restless and mobile pacing throughout the building from his bedroom on the top floor to the lobby of the law offices on the ground floor. Timsh keeps his mother's will in a chest in his office on the third floor. Front door leads into law office's lobby. Space is two stories high with balconies overlooking the lobby floor. The second balcony on the facade, glass doors, leads directly to Timsh's office. Top floor balconies on the right and left of the building, easy access. Back door leads into a basement. It's kept locked, but a key was easy to find. A dumbwaiter accessible in the basement connects all the floors, but it's a one-way trip. Once you get out, the panel shuts and the platform returns to the basement. Timsh carries a key with him. Any important chests or cabinets are locked with it. A side room on the top floor is also mysteriously locked. It seems to be an art studio. An apartment near Timsh's estate has rooftop access to the waterfront district. So that will be our getaway, I think. Right, so I think we should go to Tim first and steal the key from them and then explore. His office is on the third floor. Basement key. And there's four floors. Glass doors. Well, that's them. 
But yeah, we want Timsh's key first. <clears throat> Oh my god. Oh, right. We just went there. Jesus. Just go to the lobby, right? If I want to loot the key, it's thinking like of starting from the top, but yeah. Maybe we'll go in through the basement. Swift Shadow, you move forward slightly faster while in stealth mode. Oh, heck yeah. What do we want to get rid of? Drop Assassinating Zone gives you a bit of mana. Yeah, let's remove that. Having your weapons out doesn't slow you. Uh, sure, I guess? Drop assassinating gives you a bit of health. Let's remove that. We shouldn't put the sack in there until we're like done done, right? I told her I have to do this position. I told her. He says to bring a bottle, I bring a bottle. He says to bring food, I bring food. He says to undress, I undress. This whole place has gone to the hounds. I've heard that some have survived the plague. <laughs> I don't think they heard that. What will I do now? I have to keep this position. He says this is risky. He says to bring food, I bring food. Oh no! Okay, no one, no one heard them. Good. Help! Whoa, what the hell? All I did was walk towards them. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, you two are all right. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Sorry.
Oh. Whoops. The Lord Regents tended to that, granting me special immunity to all legal provisions concerning the plague. Of course. The Regent needs the smartest and most capable in the city unencumbered by plague provisions. Quiet. Someone's supposed I keep to the document with me at all times. <clears throat> you never know when you need it. Ah, what makes you among the smartest, would you say? Just an example. Take the Rat Plague. Boo-hoo, yes? What a calamity. Half the city is bleeding out its eyes. Half the people I know have been ruined. Meanwhile, I've tripled my fortune. Go ahead, ask me how. How, sir? The key is to create a buffer zone. Take the areas that surrounded the hives of infection and blockade them. Empty them. What do you think these guards do all day? Go into the core city where the plague's worse. Make sure folks who got it worst get out to the flooded district. Turn over anything they've got to the public trust. Useless. Anybody who's got the plague, they sell all their goods just to buy some crackpot cure. And they'll fight. We're losing men every day. But the middle class. Of course. I'm using the law. Sending men in to evict middle class families before the plague even appears. They have money. What's the point of evicting poor people? Think you'll get and your own I squad after what happened last night? Well, night's chances answer. are very good. And shopkeepers can fight worth a damn, so no one gets hurt. And now there's almost a full ring of empty houses all around the high city. You ought to be Lord Regent yourself, sir. Shut up. Sorry, sir. God, almost makes me want to kill Timsh. But it's kind of more fun. To do the non-lethal option fucks with them more. <coughs> Gotta get that key from them. There's a lot of people in that room. God, there's even a guard too. Well, I'm done with the first floor. Should we gather for whiskey and cigars tonight? Indeed, I believe so. Ah, I need the master key for that, of course. Note from a lawyer. A. When are we going to get a secretary? I can never find any of the documents filed by J, and S doesn't seem to file anything. This place is turning into a vortex of disorganization so big you could ride a whale into it. Note to Gerwin. I understand your concern about security, but I trust in the security of a key hanging from my own belt, not a combination lock. A combination lock can be guessed, cracked, or bribed. But with a simple lock and key, the contents of my archives remain safe. As for lockpicks, a fable. I've never known such a thing to truly exist. Have you? <laughs> really? Someday I'll be the one who can afford this. You know, I bet a bolt shot at the ground can be a distraction. It was, but maybe too good of one. Long. I 
guess everything's all right. Got you now. Well, that didn't go great. Oh. Who sent you? Killing me won't help. All right. Well, fine. I guess we're doing that. We have four? That's enough for the next level of blink. Allow me to blink for a longer distance. Let's see just how far we can do it. Ooh, that's pretty far. That's really far. Oh, man. Got a prowler on What? <laughs> that might be worth checking out. Just take a moment to read a book, The Academy of Natural Philosophy. <laughs> Squatting at the edge of Dunwall, the Academy of Natural Philosophy is an ancient educational institute, bustling with young students and old philosophers, alchemists, cosmologists, and vivisectionists. The best minds from across the aisles gather there to study all of nature, including the human corpus, the celestial heavens, and the physical universe. No one is allowed inside except esteemed members and the few students accepted each year after a long and arduous application process. Those living nearby can only puzzle at the exotic shipment seen coming from the river and passing through the back doors, or wrinkle their noses at the odd smells that emerge from the smokestacks atop. Royal physician Anton Sokolov is currently head of the academy. Keep 
that's that's an oopsie. Absolute disaster. Gotcha. Where are you? Just uh, die. Die. I know you're here somewhere, Scott. Fuck. It's one of those situations where I just want to, like, reload, because this whole thing is just, like, gone to garbage, but... No? Not going to. Poem by Delilah. When pretty Emily woke one day, she saw the world a different way. Her eyes now looked with a stranger's guile, her dainty mouth smiled a stranger's smile. Her hands now worked the stranger's wrath, her feet now walked a stranger's path. Emily fed, another grew stronger, the stranger's cravings drove her onward. And no one who looked on Emily's face ever guessed who ruled in Emily's place 